Hello. Uh, today we're talking about um, heat that moves around the Earth's system. Now, we've been talking about the ice at both the North Pole and the South Pole, so the Arctic and the Antarctic, uh, has been melting. Uh, we see this in glaciers, we see this on the land, we see it in the floating ice um, in the Arctic. Um, and we know that global temperatures have been rising. So now we, what we need to look at is how is it that um, the heat, the extra heat, is getting to these cold regions and causing this problem? And what we have to remember is that the Earth is very dynamic. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of movement with the atmosphere and a lot of movement with the oceans. So if you look at this first image, um, If you look at this first image, what it's showing is the atmosphere and movement of air, um, at least movements of large currents of air in the atmosphere. And we're talking huge, right? So the size of whole countries. Um, but what happens is right around the equator, so if this is our equator, that's where the most sunlight is going to be coming down, most direct sunlight. So those are our hottest or uh, tend to be our warmest places on Earth, um, and they get a lot of direct sunlight all year long. When that happens, the air heats up, and we've talked about density a million times, but that air heats up, it gets less dense, and it rises. And you can see these cells rising and the air moving up from the equator. So again, this is going to move heat around the Earth. So this hot air rises, and then it starts to move and it either goes um, towards the north or towards the south, depending on what hemisphere you're in, eventually cooling and dropping back down. So now you're redistributing uh, or redistributing the heat. It's being moved from one place to another. Uh, we also see this up at the North Pole, because there's a couple of these cells, right? But at the North Pole, you can imagine that air is going to be very cool and cold, and it sinks. It becomes more dense, sinking, but something has to come in to take its place, and you get slightly warmer air that rises up into the atmosphere and moving over to take its place. Now, as all this air is mixing, as it's rising and falling, there has to be air that moves in to take the place of the air that was rising. And what we see there is um, what we get there are uh, wind patterns um, that we can generally see globally moving in certain directions. So this isn't so much air that is rising or falling, but it's moving um, parallel to the ground. It might be moving across the surface of the ground, or it might be moving um, up high in the atmosphere, but horizontally, okay? Um, in this image, what we see are the prevailing winds. These are the winds that, um, generally speaking, you're always going to see moving in this direction. So near the equator, we have winds that are moving to the west, both in uh, the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere. And they're moving because of those changes in density that we just talked about. Um, warmer air rising, something has to move in to take its place. Uh, we see in the um, higher latitudes, like up here, that the winds are generally blowing in the opposite direction. So they're generally blowing to the east rather than to the west. Um, and again, this is all about moving the heat around the globe. So if you get more heat in some areas because of geography, that heat can be moved throughout the Earth's system. Okay, Let's try and look at, um, instead of the atmosphere, let's look at the oceans. Now we've talked about the oceans before, and what we see with the oceans is the same thing, right? Warmer ocean water or less dense ocean water rising, and more dense or colder ocean water sinking. And we get these basic currents. And you see in red, red in particular, because I'm really talking about 
moving heat around the Earth, right? That's how a lot of this heat is getting up to um, the poles, either to the North Pole or down to the South Pole. Classic example, the Gulf Stream right here. The Gulf Stream takes all this warm water from the equator, kind of gets trapped in the Gulf of Mexico here for a minute, warms up some more, and then travels up past the east coast of the United States towards, if you look here, towards um, Europe, and specifically towards England and Ireland and Scotland. Now, England, Ireland, and Scotland are a lot warmer. They have much better weather than they should at that high latitude. They should actually be much colder. But because of all this heat from the Gulf Stream coming up here, it helps to keep this area warm. We also see a current like that that goes past Japan right over here. Same thing. Warm water from the equator moving up past Japan, keeping parts of Japan warmer than you would expect them to be, okay? And then the last thing, since we're still talking about the Gulf Stream, let's look at this final image. And this Gulf Stream is a thermal image put together um, that shows the hot water in red, that's the warmest water, and then the coolest water going down into first yellow, and then green, and then blue. But the important thing is, you see this water moving past Florida. So this water is moving past around Florida, past Miami, and then up along the East Coast until it gets to, I believe that's Cape Hatteras, I believe. Um, and it's pushed off the coast. And you can see it kind of swirls occasionally. And we get a swirling over here. But generally speaking, it's still moving off towards Europe, and it carries, I mean, just an immense amount of heat trapped in that water further north, redistributing the heat around our whole globe. All right. Thank you very much.